All right, let's let's try to rationalize one of the big things that I hear people talk about when electric cars come into the conversation. Clearly, that's not an electric car. I think that was a motorcycle, but nonetheless. Uh, the common thought that I hear, I wish people would just say, I don't, if, if you don't like electric cars, just say it. Okay? Don't try to come up with some kind of um, amateur engineering reason why you don't like electric cars because most of them can be torn apart pretty easily. Obviously, every technology has its advantages and disadvantages. Electric cars can't do everything that gasoline can do, and gasoline can't do everything electric can do. You choose the one that's best for you. I just don't understand why we have to have a culture war over it. But getting back on topic is, will it break the power grid? If, people, if, if everybody drove electric cars and charged them either at home or at a charging station, would it bust the power grid and send us all back into, a, into the dark ages? Hmm. This is an interesting question. We have to kind of think about this in terms of something that's more familiar. Because the biggest problem that I see with anything electric car, electric cars, heat pumps, all these technologies that are being touted as solutions to our energy woes and emissions problems are related to unfam unfamiliarity. People just aren't familiar with the technology. They just aren't used to it and therefore might be a little averse to it. It's understandable, you know, everybody's different. Some people love trying new things. Some people would rather just stick with what they have and they know that that's worked for, for years. So to compare an electric car to an electrical appliance that most of us are familiar with is the kitchen stove, the range, the cooker, the hob, if you're English, whatever you call it, it's that big box in the kitchen that heats up food. Just every home that I've ever been in, apartment, flat, uh, whatever you call it, has one of these boxes inside of it. Sometimes it's just a cooktop, sometimes the oven's in the wall over there, but nonetheless, there's, all this, there's always this thing that heats food up. So everybody's familiar with these things. We, may, we might not be familiar with how much power is actually needed to operate them, but that's where it becomes a really useful tool to compare to electric cars. So in your kitchen, some of us have gas cooking you know, devices, stoves, ranges. Um, but most of us in the United States have electric. 68% of households in the United States have electric cooking appliances. Here's a map of the distribution of them. You can clearly see the more rural states have electric stoves and the southern states have electric stoves because number one, these rural areas aren't going to have natural gas lines out to everybody's houses, but they all have electricity to their homes. And then the southern states probably aren't going to have as much natural gas because there's not as really a need for heating down there. So they're going to be more just using electric because why have gas just for a stove? You know, it's, there's, that's, that's not really a utilitarian thing to, to have two utilities just to run a, one to run a stove. So, but the left coast and the northeast tend to have a lot more gas really interesting from a politics standpoint. If anybody is familiar with the January 2023 tizzy in the Washington DC over gas stoves, this map is really entertaining because take the election map and put it over top of this and you're like, wait a minute, you guys all love uh, gas stoves in here and why aren't you using them? You're, most of your people in these states 90% of the people in North Carolina use an electric stove. But nonetheless, even in New York, um, you know, or California, California, 70% of homes have gas, but there's 30% that still have electric. So chances are, if you're in California, you ran into an electric stove at some point in your life in state. 
So you know what I'm talking about. Familiarity. This, these stoves have typically four burners on the top and there's the oven. You turn the burners on, there's usually a big burner. I'm just gonna say the cheap model where there's one big burner and three small burners. The big burner is like 2000 watts. The small burners are like 1500 watts. The oven, let's just say is 2000 watts. Okay, that is, that's about 8000 watts of power. So you turn all four burners in the oven on and let them heat up, you will be instantaneously consuming 8,000 watts of power with that stove. So we know that 78% or 68% of homes are electric stoves. Um, then I had data here about how many households were in the United States. We're just going to take the Census Bureau. I'm going to say that Google did the right uh, calculations here and they found 123 million homes, households in the United States. Let's assume that every one of them has a, has a stove in it and, um, and that 68% of them are electric. 123 million. Is that the right number of zeros? No, I'm missing one. Okay, times 0.68. 83, 83.64 million, oh yeah, 83.64 million electric stoves in the United States. We're just gonna round it down to 83.6 million. You know, I'm rounding down to be conservative in the numbers we get here because you're gonna see they're so astronomical it doesn't really matter. All right, we're gonna say that there's a flash mob on Twitter or, or, or X, whatever they're calling at this hour. And they tell everybody, even CNN and Fox News and ABC, NBC, CBS and Facebook and Instagram and, and whatever other in, uh, communications media there are, mass text, whatever have you, go at six o'clock Eastern time. Turn on your electric stove. Turn all four burners and the oven on high all at once. Every single household. And let's say everybody complies, which we know from past events that not everybody's going to comply. Probably not even half people are going to comply. But let's just say they do. How much power would we consume? Are we going to break the power grid by doing this? Okay, 83.6 million electric stoves. What did I say? They're 8,000 watts apiece when you do the whole deal. That comes out to, oh man, that's a monstrosity of a number. 669 gigawatts. 669 billion watts. If I go to the current... Energy Information Administration grid monitoring website, and I see how much power is the United States currently using. Um, how much is it? At 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we were using 450,000 megawatts or 450 gigawatts. Wow, um, that flash mob of turning on your electric stove will demolish the power grid. Actually, even if we got 50% compliance, we would probably still totally destroy the power grid. Really interesting, right? Is it with Teslas? No. It's your freaking cooktop in your kitchen. Hmm. Really? Wow. It's that easy, right? Well, that's where this number that I just came up with is amateur asinine engineering okay you're probably sitting there like that's not going to happen all right and the same exact thing applies to electric cars if you sat and you said that there are just say there's 200 million automobiles in the united states personal cars and that everybody plugs them all in at the same time and charges the battery from dead you're going to reach a similar kind of power number here you're going to have a, 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 a humongous number that's far bigger than what we're actually able to, to cons we're consuming in any given time. But the reality of it is your stove in your kitchen, 
somebody's going to come back and throw at me, well, people will come home from work and then they plug their car into charge. So they're all charging kind of at the same time. Okay, well, also, you go in your kitchen and generally people tend to eat dinner around 5 to 6 to 7 p.m. at night. People tend to take a shower either when they get home or when they go leave in the morning. And your electric water heater comes on and sucks down 4,500 watts to heat the water back up. Why doesn't the grid have problems with those, but it'll have a problem with electric cars? What we have to understand is that you as an individual effectively don't mean anything when it comes to this system. Okay? It's the actions of everybody all put together and the fact of the matter is that based on the laws of statistics and probability, the your stove is not going to be drawing power at the exact same time as everybody else's stove. Your electric car is not going to be drawing power at the same exact time as everybody else's. And all these people are going to be charging at different times throughout the day. There may be more people charging in the evening, just like there's more people cooking in the evening. But in generally, in general, they're so spaced out that it just becomes random noise. And when you look at the load on the electric grid, it turns into a sine wave. People go to bed at night. It's like a circadian rhythm. People are, the, the, the highest demand is at 17 hours, which is 5 p.m. Makes sense, right? In the summertime especially, because it's hot out. And then the lowest demand is at 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, huh. Not many people are awake at 4 o'clock in the morning, so there's very little electricity being consumed compared to here. It's a factor, it's a factor of 50%. We use 50% more during at 5 p.m. than we do at 4 a.m. Now, in your house, you would not see a curve like this. You would see just a, a crazy, noisy, you know, monstrosity of, of usage. It would, be, it would be all over the place. But when you take everybody in a country of 300 million people and you put them all together, statistically, this is the result. This is the heartbeat of, of America right here. It's not Chevy. It's this at 60 hertz. Okay, flowing into your into your appliances and your stove and your water heater and your dryer, which are all large consumers of power, just like an electric car would be. Now we have to think about this in terms of energy. So I'm just talking about power, watts. Okay, watts is what defines the the, the operation of the grid at any given moment. The power plants have to make the same amount of watts as we're consuming for the system to be balanced, right? And when I say power plants, I'm also including batteries because there are a lot of batteries in certain, certain regions. Batteries can absorb and release energy very quickly, you know, compared with like a coal burner where it takes hours to heat up sometimes. So here's all the different regions of the U.S. and the consumptions. Um, here, here is the... Uh, generation of electricity by energy source, okay, where, where we actually produce power from, okay, natural gas is the biggest generator, we have uh, a nice curve here that's slanted towards the evening, because we have renewable energy like solar, where the peak is in the middle of the day at like 12 p.m., 2 p.m. it looks like here, um, and then wind peaks in the middle of the night, at midnight. So we use these other fuels like natural gas and coal to balance it all out during the rest of the day. And right here, our generation from natural gas at say 7 p.m. on 909-23 was 274 gigawatts. Okay, there is like a trillion or a thousand gigawatts of natural gas fired power plants in the United States we have far more power plants than we actually use on a regular basis. Okay, a lot of people like to point to these renewable energy. Well, the sun's not out at night, so you're not using the asset. Well, there's also 
a bajillion natural gas burners out there that barely ever run or run like less than 10% of the time. There's coal plants in Pennsylvania that run like 3% of the time because we just don't need all that capacity. It's like the parking lot at Target. It's designed for the Black Friday shopping. And even on Black Friday, there's still empty spaces. We have plenty of reserve to deal with the electric cars that are being bought now and well into the future. And because we have all that time, we have the ability to make the changes necessary to accommodate that the power plants, the generators aren't the, aren't the problem. It's the getting the power to where it needs to be. The transmission lines, the substations, even the electric lines that come into your house. Okay, my house here, I share a single little transformer with 10 other homes. Okay, 10 houses. I've never had a problem with voltage being low or, or you know, issues, flickering lights or anything like that. But yet, that little 50 kVA or 25 kVA transformer up on a pole out there is able to supply power to all of our, um, all these 10 homes. The electric company basically just knows over 100 years of history that statistically speaking, the loads are not going to be concentrated in one particular time. They're just going to be stochastically dispersed over time. And therefore, we don't need to size the equipment for 10 electric stoves running at once worth of capacity. And even with an electric car, your average person in the United States drives like 13,000 miles a year or something like that, or 10,000, I don't know, let's just say it's 12,000 miles per year, okay? Divide that by 365 means an average of about 33 miles per day in, 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 in your average, per, average driver over the entire year. Your average is 33 miles per day in your car. Okay, An electric car requires about 0 0.3, third, about a third of a kilowatt hour of electricity to go one mile. So we can then divide, multiply, actually multiply 33 miles by 0.3 just do 0.33, just to be a little conservative. We need 10 kilowatt hours a day to keep our electric cars, you know, gas or a fuel tank topped off. So every day a person would come home, on average they, they dispense 10 or 11 kilowatt hours of electricity into the car. All right, multiply that by 365. They would require about 4,000 extra kilowatt hours of electricity. Okay, that's going to increase your typical household's energy consumption, electricity consumption by 30%, 33%. Typical homes using like 10 or 12,000 a year. Okay, um, let's just do the average power would then also go up by the same amount. But we're still looking at like you know, instead of an average power of 1.1 kilowatts coming into your house, it might be, um, you know, 1.4 kilowatts. It's really not that much of a difference. So I'm not worried in the slightest about the ability for our infrastructure at the moment to handle the adoption of electric cars, because by the time electric cars become anywhere near the majority of vehicles, these upgrades would have been going on for years and years and years, decades. It's going to take a long time for this stuff to happen. So anybody who's freaking out that, oh, we're going to go into a dark age because the people are going to plug their car in, it's going to break the power grid. Don't worry about it. It's not a problem. And if you just are saying those things out of a disingenuous, politics-driven, or personal reason, just say you don't like electric cars. Don't buy one. That's, that's the solution to the problem. Don't try to use a techno technical or engineering argument to try to justify your personal dislike for the technology. Just say you don't like it. I don't like electric car. I don't like the way they look. I don't like the way they sound. I don't like the way they drive. They're too expensive. Just say that and you'll be good. And that's all I've got for that topic.